In this video, I'll begin to introduce the idea of Green's functions. And I'd like to do that by uh, motivating them with a simple physical picture. So I want you to suppose that we have a particle of mass M in a resistive medium. So there's uh, some air drag or some friction moving under the influence of an external force, lowercase f of T with a time dependent force. We can describe the velocity of this particle V of t by the following differential equation. So we have uh, mass times acceleration is equal to the sum of forces. Over here, this term is the air drag, which depends linearly on the velocity. And this term over here is some external force. And we're going to consider the case where uh, the particle is initially at rest. And then at some time t prime, we're going to uh, give the particle a sudden blow. a sudden and short-lived blow. Okay. In other words, this means that our external force uh, is going to be a very short duration. And uh, it's just going to provide the particle with an impulse. And this, this sudden blow is what we're describing with f of t. Okay, so if you want to picture this, then we have time over here, the velocity of our particle. And then the particle starts at rest, so there's no velocity. And then at some time, t prime, we hit the particle. So you can think of it as just giving it like a little, a little flick like that. And for a very short amount of time, so let's say this over here is t plus uh, delta t. And then after that, it will evolve according to uh, the remaining terms in our differential equation. Okay, so our force acts between t prime and t plus t prime plus delta t. And we're going to take delta t to be very, very small. So tending towards zero. Then after this time, or we don't exert any more force. Okay. So in other words, the differential equation describing the velocity of our particle after time t prime plus delta t, shouldn't be a prime, uh, is just equal to this. So we've removed the force uh, after this time. So we're looking at what's happening over here. And you recognize this as a separable differential equation. Separable ODE. And the solution of the separable ODE is some constant 
and an exponent like that. So you remember to separate this, you put everything that depends on V over on this side, everything depends on T on that time and you integrate both sides. And what we're looking for, so uh, this over here, we're starting out here. So this says that the velocity is going to exponentially decay back down to zero after we stop applying this force. So after our sudden blow to the particle. And the amplitude, so the velocity over here uh, encodes the effect that our, our blow had on the particle. And we wanna know what that value is. Just to make comments for t bigger than that. Okay, that's this a over here. So we want to know how to how to determine that. And to do that, we're going to look at what happens between times t prime and t prime plus delta t, delta t. So. Okay, so to get an expression for the initial amplitude of the velocity, we're going to look at what happens in the time that we're applying the force. And during this time, the differential equation describing the velocity of the particle is equal to this. Okay, so now we've included back the force and we'll take the dt over to the other side. And now we're going to integrate only about this time. So we're only interested in the velocity at t prime to the velocity at t prime plus delta t over here. Then we're going to integrate uh, this part with respect to time. So over here, because we're integrating with respect to the velocity, we evaluate it at the uh, two velocities at time t prime and time t prime plus delta t over here, we're integrating with respect to time. So our bounds of integration are uh, time. And then we also integrate the force with respect to time. And for very small durations, of the force. This integral is equal to an impulse. And an impulse generally gives a, uh, an impulse acting on a particle will give it uh, a momentum mb, which is equal to that. Okay, so because of this sudden blow, our particle now has this momentum 
which is equal to this quantity that we're calling the impulse. So what this means then is our initial velocity at the end of that impulse is just given by this quantity i divided by the mass of our particle. And then given the short time duration that this lasted for, uh, air drag is negligible. For these types of uh, durations, this is negligible. meaning that we're left with, so performing this integration, we're just left with the difference of the bounds of integration. The recessive term we said was negligible, so this is essentially zero. And then we call this quantity the impulse I. We know because the particle started at rest that the velocity at t is equal to t prime is zero. Before this time. And we also found before that after the blow, the velocity decays exponentially. So that means that at t is equal to t prime plus delta t over here, this is our velocity. So this term corresponds to this over here. This we set was zero because the particle was initially at rest. And then we take the mass over to the other side. So we're left with that. As delta t tends to zero, so for very small uh, duration of time, we have the following. And isolating for A, we're left with the uh, initial uh, or the final velocity at the end of the blow is given by this quantity over here. So this is essentially the velocity from the impulse and it will decay exponentially. Uh, but since we inverted it, we put it to the other side, then uh, we have a positive exponent over here. So this is the response of the particle to a single sudden blow. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at what happens when you apply several consecutive sudden blows uh, very quickly, very close to one another. And this will lead us to the idea of uh, an impulse response function. Okay. Now for uh, the sake of completeness, we can write down what our velocity was because that's what we were looking for in the first place. So we said it was zero for any times smaller than t prime. So right before we apply the force. And then any time after applying the force, 
it looks something like this. So it's still an exponentially decaying uh, velocity because of the air drag. So that looks over here at T prime. This shoots up and then decays exponentially. And we'll generalize this to uh, multiple blows in the next video.